water. On Earth, it's so ordinary, so familiar, that we rarely stop to consider its true value. But what if I told you that, hidden away on the moon, the most barren and desolate world in our night sky lies a colossal reserve of water waiting to be unlocked. The Visca cosmic treasure could redefine the future of humanity in space, shaping the next era of exploration and settlement beyond Earth. Imagine it. Astronauts sipping water inside a lunar base, rockets launching from a moon outpost, and futuristic colonies thriving in a place once thought impossibly dry. In the next few minutes, let's journey through the scientific evidence for water on the moon, unmask its mysterious origins, and uncover why this newfound resource could be the most strategic game changer in humanity's quest for the stars. Let's start with a shocking fact. Right now, the cost to deliver just one pound, 450 grams of cargo into space can exceed $10,000 US dollars. Water, heavy and essential, is one of the most expensive commodities to transport off Earth. But what if we could find and use water right there on the moon? Imagine slashing those costs, opening the door to sustainable lunar outposts and transforming our ability to explore deep space. The key is lunar water, an innovation that could revolutionize every aspect of space activity. This isn't just about discovering water, it's about unlocking the secrets to making human presence in space economically viable, sustainable and ambitious as never before. For decades, the moon was seen as a lifeless, bone-dry rock. Early lunar explorers brought every drop of water with them, shaping strategies that assumed total scarcity. But recent scientific breakthroughs have shattered this old belief. Now we know that water exists on the moon in the form of ice and molecular water, both on the surface and hidden in deep, shadowed craters. Why is this so important? Water isn't just for drinking. It's a multi-purpose resource. It sustains astronauts, becomes oxygen for breathing, and when split into hydrogen and oxygen, forms the very fuel that rockets need to launch. In short, water transforms the moon from a dead end into a launching pad, a resupply depot or gateway station for emissions venturing deeper into our solar system. But how did we discover this lunar water? The journey of discovery has been a saga of scientific ingenuity. In 1994, the Clementine mission provided the first tantalizing hints. Radar reflections from the moon's southern pole suggested the presence of water ice in permanent shadow. Four years later, NASA's lunar prospector confirmed this with its neutron spectrometer, detecting hydrogen indicative of potentially hundreds of millions of tons of ice hidden at the poles. Then, in 2008, India's Chandrayaan-1 orbiter, equipped with the Moon Mineralogy Mapper, not only confirmed water ice in the eternally dark craters, but also detected signs of hydrated minerals in sunlit regions, suggesting water was more widespread than previously believed. A turning point came in 2009. NASA's El Cross mission deliberately crashed a spent rocket stage into the Cabeus crater near the lunar south pole. Instruments aboard the trailing spacecraft analyzed the resulting plume and found unmistakable signatures of water ice, confirming once and for all that the moon harbors significant reserves of water. But where did the moon's water come from? The answer is still debated. One leading theory suggests that water arrived via impacts from water-rich comets and asteroids early in the moon's history. The isotopic composition of lunar water in some samples 
supports this idea. Another theory proposes that solar wind, streams of hydrogen ions from the sun, bombards the lunar surface, combining with oxygen in the soil to form water molecules. There's also tantalizing evidence that Earth's own magnetic field could send hydrogen ions to the moon, further contributing to its water stores. The truth may be an intricate mix of these sources shaped by billions of years of cosmic interactions. The discoveries didn't stop there. In October 2020, NASA's Sophia Observatory made a groundbreaking observation. For the first time, it detected molecular water, H2O, on the sunlit surface of the moon, specifically near the Clavius crater. This finding upended previous assumptions, showing that water isn't confined to frigid darkness, but can exist, bound within lunar soil, even where sunlight touches. So, where is all this water found? Scientists now recognize two primary forms. First, there's ice locked within cold traps, regions of the lunar poles, ensconced in perpetual shadow, where sunlight never reaches and temperatures plummet below 230 degrees. Here, water ice can persist for billions of years, shielded from the harsh vacuum of space. Second, there's molecular water and hydroxyl scattered throughout the lunar soil, even in sunlit areas. These molecules may be trapped in tiny glass beads formed by micrometeorite impacts or bound within mineral grains. Together, these discoveries reveal that lunar water is not only more abundant, but also more widely distributed and dynamic than anyone had dared to hope. But where did this water come from? The origins of lunar water are still being explored with multiple theories vying for prominence. Some scientists believe that comets and water-rich asteroids bombarded the moon over eons, delivering water ice that became trapped in cold, shadowed craters. Others propose that solar wind, streams of hydrogen ions blown from the sun, reacts with oxygen in the lunar soil, forming hydroxyl and water molecules. And a newer idea suggests that even Earth's own magnetic field might occasionally direct hydrogen ions toward the moon, contributing to its water budget. The truth may well be a complex interplay of all these cosmic processes. What does this mean for the future? The answer is transformative. The presence of water on the moon unlocks the possibility of in situ resource utilization, ISRU, using local materials to support human life and fuel spacecraft. Astronauts could drink lunar water, breathe lunar oxygen, and power rockets with lunar derived fuel. This would slash mission costs, make lunar outposts feasible, and set the stage for more ambitious journeys such as crewed missions to Mars and beyond. But extracting lunar water is no simple task. The moon's environment, it is harsh and unforgiving. Extreme cold in shadowed craters, abrasive lunar dust, and the vacuum of space all pose formidable engineering challenges. Robotic landers and drills must operate in darkness and at temperatures colder than anything on Earth. And once extracted, water must be stored and processed carefully to prevent it from sublimating away into space. To meet these challenges, space agencies are mobilizing. NASA's Artemis program aims to return humans to the moon and establish a sustainable outpost with water extraction at its core. The Viper rover, set to explore the lunar South Pole, will map water ice and test technologies for finding and harvesting it. Small, agile CubeSats, like Lunar Flashlight and Lunar Trailblazer, will scout out ice deposits from orbit, while robotic missions like Prime-1 
will attempt the first real-world extraction of lunar ice. These efforts are not just technical experiments. They're crucial steps toward the next chapter of human exploration. The moon, long thought to be a sterile, resource-poor world, is now seen as a crucial stepping stone, a place where we can learn to live off the land, master the challenges of space, and prepare for the next giant leap. Water on the moon is more than a scientific curiosity. It's a strategic asset. It offers the means to create a sustainable human presence beyond Earth, enabling extended missions, building blocks for lunar industry, and a launch pad to the planets. With water as our ally, the dream of living and thriving in space is no longer the stuff of science fiction. It's a bold, achievable reality. As we look ahead, the vision is clear. By harnessing the moon's hidden water, we lay the foundation for a future where humanity is not bound to one world, but poised to journey ever further toward Mars, the outer planets, and the infinite beyond. The moon's, the moon's water is the key and the future of space exploration may well depend on how we unlock its secrets.